we are always trying to reinvent or invent, I should say, new ways of uh, creating attraction and motivation and, and keeping people going. I cannot tell you the number of people that have tried to hire away team members here to come work for them and pay them even more. It's never happened, ever happened, at least that I know of. It's <laughs> never happened. Uh, that said, um, every single January, we're, we just talked about it in our Q4, what's one of the things mm -hmm. we're prepping for Q, Q, Q1. Every single January, every single person on the team rewrites their roles and responsibilities, basically their job description. Mm -hmm. Do their has their interests changed throughout the year? Did something impact them in such a way where their creative decided to take them in another direction? If so, let's rearrange their role. It's also the reason why whenever I interview, which is not too much anymore, but whenever I interview somebody, I ask them, what do you want to do after you quit here? Now, I've had people kind of push back on me. They say, that's, that's a terrible question. And I would simply ask why. For me, they might say, oh, no, I really want to work at Bottleneck. No. After you're done working here, what's your dream? Like, what would this be a nice step for you? Well, I want to go be a musician. Okay, fantastic. That gives me inf in information that I need to know. This person's going to be here. They know I'm excited about their future. They're going to work their hindquarters off for me for another year and a half, maybe two years, and then they're off to their music career. Or they may say something along the lines that, um, you know, I want to be a, I, I want to own my own business one day. Is there a way that I can create a role within Bottleneck because I really like this person to where they could feel like they. Maybe they own a piece of the business in the future. Maybe there's some way that we can build a role for them so that as they move from personal assistant to project coordinator to project manager to operations manager to director of operations, now all of a sudden, maybe they can make a little something here and, and kind of harness the power of being their own entrepreneur. What can we do? And by asking those types of questions, it goes all the way back to what we first started in systems processes and workflows because every time we do something we do something as if it's the last time we're ever going to do it and what that means is we document 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 the systems is the big circle that's all the different departments the processes are how each things get done it's a medium-sized circle for each department and then the workflows that's the step-by-step -step. and as you mentioned before uh that, that in the workflows, you have the how to's step one, step two, step three, but you also need decision making. Well, if I make a call to somebody, Jamie, when do I follow up? Or Arthur, when is the best time for me to call back out? I don't know if you ever had somebody reach out to you and go, what should I do next? What do you want me to do? <laughs> well, if you can make a decision on what if scenarios to where if you make a phone call, you get no answer, follow back up in two days. If you get an answer, what happened? Did they say yes, do this? Did they say no, do this? And you can actually make decision trees with decision logic. And it's so amazing what we can do. And here's the best part about it. I don't make it, my team does. Because they're involved <laughs> in that every single flipping day. Listen to Between Data and Risk Podcast.